conferred length about the impact of the internet on politics today. And my dear colleague John Keane, well known to many people in this room, um, has given us a new definition of democracy called monitory democracy. He thinks so profound is the impact of the internet and the availability of information and the mobilizing capacities uh, that the sharing of information gives that he says we've moved out of the era of representative democracy altogether and we're now in something called monitory democracy where in a sense the ordinary people in the street have this extraordinary capacity to shine a light in increasingly on the affairs of governance, of politicians, political parties and so on and this is creating what Dick I think calls the counter democratic power uh, this is a really important set of phenomena. I think Spain takes us even one step further than that. What Spanish activists would say to me is not just a passive relationship in, in relation to those who govern us. So it's not just the importance of digital tools. It's not just it allows us to assemble more information about what they're doing and to counteract that and to point out corruption, clientelism, nepotism and so on. It actually gives us a, an ability to mobilize much more easily with much greater facility. Think back at the start of that thing that I showed you, 15M is in itself a monument to the power that connectedness and connected politics has. Can you imagine any other way in which you could get six to eight million people in 60 cities and towns across Spain to mobilize if it wasn't for this extraordinary facility that quite simple digital technologies now has to mobilize people and to make them feel like participants in a political process rather than passive recipients of a process of governance. So we're in the middle of a revolution here. It's a revolution which is affecting everything. It's called, in the Australian Financial Review, digital disruption. <laughs> you know, that, and that's the polite, that's how the elites describe it. Maya, online, David Jones are all having to adapt, bricks and mortar model, MOOCs coming into universities and so on. We will look back on this phase of our lives as the moment of a, an enormously disruptive but also creative process of reconstructing the possibility and the feasibility of new forms of mobilization and participation. The Spanish laboratory, that's the phrase I urge you to think of as we go out into the night, that they are in the forefront of thinking about how these tools can be useful for us, not just watching, but participating. Not just participating, but taking over. Liquid democracy is one of the biggest phenomena in yeah. Europe at the moment. Is yeah. why do we need these governors at all? Mm -hmm. Why do we need MPs, politicians? Why can't we have a virtual commons where we decide for ourselves what's important, how to respond, and so on? It's just becoming so easy. It is disruptive. It's disruptive of elite power, whether that be in Spain or in Australia, Europe, you name it. We are on the cusp of something very, very big here. And the events in Spain are absolutely that tip of the arrow of change. That's why you're all here enjoying and, and being incredibly participatory in this discussion, because we can see it in front of our faces. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, I think I've earned uh, a comment at the end, and in fact, the comment is, is about something you kind of skited over. Sorry, I'll get closer so that um, Dick can hear me. So he didn't talk much about the Pirate Party. Not enough. And he didn't mention Iceland, oh, where it's Ooh. doing incredibly well. Right. So uh, our friend uh, has something to do with WikiLeaks. Yes. Um, Brigitte, Jan's daughter, is the leader of the Pirate Party and now they are the most popular party in Iceland by 10 percent wow. and she is likely, the politician is likely to be the next Prime Minister of Iceland. So these movements work, these alternatives work. What's happening? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> no Iceland! So you know these digital disruptions can enter into the mainstream. Iceland did not bail out their bankers. Yeah. Iceland prosecuted their bankers Woo! and the people took over. Yeah. And when, when they say to her in the radio interviews, oh, what's it, you know, what are you thinking about you know, now that it looks like you're going to be the, the next Prime Minister, she says, oh no! <laughs> because ordinary people don't want to leave. This, this blank place 
is great and in fact I think we've, we've come to the point in time where we can share our ideas across the world and we can all we can we can have more horizontal structures liquid democracy is the future it is a digital model and we'll get there very quickly yeah. I think on that very positive note, <laughs> we should end tonight. Um, of course, we should thank both our speakers for not just their yeah. interesting and informative talks, but for really yeah. um, and empowering talks. I, I certainly feel energised uh, leaving here tonight, uh, which is not what I thought I would feel after talking about Spain, austerity, mass unemployment but in fact the message has been one of the power of the people so i hope you take that with us tonight thank you very much and hope to see you here again yeah.